Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stats All Day with Dr. O'Day. My name is Connor and today we are going to be talking about how to make ANOVA reporting, especially factorial ANOVA reporting, a little bit more effective. Because unfortunately, once we get up to the complexity of a factorial ANOVA, there just gets to be so many numbers. We've got the main effect of one variable, we've got a main effect of another variable, we've got their interaction, we've got means and standard deviations all over the place, and unfortunately it just gets so complex, a lot of times we can benefit from just adding in a simple table. So what we're going to do is talk through a few different ways that you could approach making a table for a factorial ANOVA. Now, if you haven't already done so, so if, if you don't understand what a factorial ANOVA is doing, so we, we do need to keep in mind this is a statistic that we would use if we have more than one categorical independent variable. So we've got maybe two in categorical independent variables. So in the study that I'm showing you right here, We've got gender as male or female, and then we also have a second categorical variable, which is we randomly assign people to report their COVID-19 attitudes from a neutral standpoint when thinking about themselves and when thinking about their family in this particular study. You don't need to worry too much about what we actually did, but just know that this was a two by three between groups design. And so if you don't know what a factorial ANOVA is, I actually encourage you at this point to pause this video and check out the video that I'm going to link below on what exactly a factorial ANOVA is and how to run it and also how to report that factorial ANOVA. Because what you're going to realize is that, you know, eventually when you're working on reporting a factorial ANOVA, things just get too complex. And unfortunately, there starts to be too many numbers and the results section in today's video is all about taking some of those numbers out of the text so that it becomes more readable while at the same time still presenting your reader with all of that valuable information that they need for your analysis and for understanding the analyses. So, with that being said, if you do need a refresher on what a factorial ANOVA is, check out that first video I linked below. And additionally, if you're wondering how I made some of these formatting choices for my table, check out actually the video that I have on how to make an APA format table for a one-way ANOVA because a lot of that is going to be very similar here. So now let's go ahead and talk through these tables that I've created. So these first two tables are actually the exact same. What I have is I have male and female across the top. Underneath those, I have the three conditions that participants were in. So they were randomly assigned to either neutral, self, or family. And so you see that both these tables are showing the same information. I just changed whether I had the mean and standard deviation along the side for each of those conditions or along the top. Now you can do whichever of these works for you. You can make a choice for yourself. Do make sure that when you include the title though, you do put actually a title here. I didn't do that for the rest of them. Um, but you need something that you know is kind of showing you a little bit more information than just table one or table two. So, both of these tables, again, feel free to choose the one that you like best. I personally prefer this one. I think that it's a cleaner look. It nicely presents the mean and standard deviation of all of these different conditions. And it's, it's very easy to see. You know, it's easily unpackable. So I can actually, if I was the reader, I would see that participants who self-identified as male, who were in the family condition, reported a mean of 7.80 for safety. Now, if we're thinking about how to make this table, we would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows, and we would need one, two, whoop, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. And so we always want to think before we start our table how many rows and columns we need. So if you were making one just like me with a two by three design, you'd need eight rows or nine rows and eight columns. And then you just start plugging stuff in. One thing to keep in mind, we do merge our title across the entire top. 
and we merge male across these three columns and then we merge female across these three columns that way we're showing our reader that these three are pertaining to female these three are pertaining to male and then we have the means and standard deviations represented there now one limitation of these two tables is that it doesn't actually tell us which ones are significant it doesn't tell us is there a main effect of gender is there a main effect of condition and is there an interaction and so this one of these two tables you could report that information in text I suppose but you're getting back to this idea that there's a lot of numbers that are being represented in text if you do that so I might pair this table with table 2 here where I nicely represent for each of the three dependent variables we've got safety we've got negative affect and we've got panic I show the main effect of gender for each of those and we can see that there is a main effect of gender predicting safety we see that there is not a main effect of gender predicting negative affect and there is not a main effect of gender predicting panic we then can also see the main effect of condition and we see that all of those p-values are significant there we're also presenting our reader with the partial eta squared which again is telling us what percent of variance is being accounted for by gender condition and then also their interaction so here we know is there a main effect of gender is there a main effect of condition and is there an interaction between the two and we also know each of the means and standard deviations by including these two tables that being said these tables are also still a little bit limited because here when we're examining the main effect of gender we're comparing just men to just women and we don't actually care at this point about whether they were in the neutral self or family conditions and unfortunately this table just doesn't tell me what the overall mean for male participants on safety negative affect and panic are and what the overall mean for female in safety negative affect and panic so unfortunately I actually don't have the means and standard deviations that are being compared for this I also don't have the means and standard deviations for each of the conditions collapse across participant gender so unfortunately I would still have to report those in text well that's fine and you're welcome to do that we could make this first table here a little bit more informative though by including marginal means so you can see here I've now included the marginal means for each of those so what this means is to kind of walk you through what a marginal mean is so what we do is we average all of these participants together to get the marginal mean which would this is telling us the overall mean on safety for male participants this one is telling us the overall mean on safety for female participants and so we when we come up here and we look at the main effect of safety here this 0 0.026 here the p-value that's actually comparing the 7.15 to 7.72 so now we've told the reader what those means and standard deviations are for gender we also have the means and standard deviations for condition represented right here and additionally if the reader is interested for whatever reason we have the overall grand mean collapsing across both gender and condition represented down here so if we were to pair this table that I've created right here and again if you want to know how to create this table all you have to do is check out my video on how to create a table in APA format for an ANOVA and you do all of the same things so again if we want to talk through just briefly how many rows and columns we would need we would need one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 rows, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 columns. Now, as, as always, we merge and center marginal across the M and the SD columns. Mar merge and center family across those two merge and center self across those two merge and center neutral across those two and so if you were to pair this table here 
with this table here, we could actually remove pretty much all of the numbers from our results section and just say, is there a main effect of gender? Is there a main effect of condition? Is there an interaction between gender and condition? The one thing that we would still have to tell the reader is if there's an effect of condition, which there is in this case, we would have to probe that effect using Bonferroni or two key post hoc comparisons. And in that case, while we do have the means and the standard deviations represented right here, we would still need to indicate whether those means and standard deviations are significantly different. Now you could, kind of like my One Way ANOVA video, you could start to add subscripts to this. So you could actually start to add like an A, a B, if these two were significantly different, and then an A subscript and actually say, these two are not different, but they're both different from self. You could do something like that if, if that was something that you wanted to do. I'd probably just go ahead and report the p-values for those comparisons in text if it were me. But again, make these tables your own. One other way that we could do this, now we're starting to get a little bit complicated down here, is if we wanted to include everything in one table, we could actually go ahead and put the F tests for each of those gender condition and gender by condition interaction. We could put all of those F tests there and we would actually not want to italicize these numbers here. So we unitalicize those. You can see the F's, the P's, the partial eta squareds, and then you could see all of the means and standard deviations. So this table is actually what I'm doing there is I'm actually combining these two tables together. And you could do it that way. Um, to me that's a little bit cumbersome and so I actually simplified that reporting here where instead of actually listing out all of the p-values I actually just told my reader that if it has one star the p-value is less than 0 0.05, if it has two stars the p-value is less than 0 0.01, three stars it's less than 0 0.001. And what we can then see is we've got all of that represented here. So are those significant or are they not significant? And we can take the p-values out then. And then underneath each of those, I give the partial eta squared values. And then we also have the means and standard deviations off to the right. One limitation of these two tables is just like these first few tables, unfortunately, we don't have those marginal means. So now if we want to get really crazy and we want to put everything into one overarching table. So now we are going completely off the rails. We're putting it all into one table. We are saying, listen here, I'm going to get everything in here. I'm going to take all the numbers out and I'm going to do it in one and only one table. We get a little bit more complicated here. So just like these previous tables here, I've collapsed the F statistics for gender condition and gender by condition. We see that that's for safety here, for negative affect here, and for panic here. Then over on the right side, I have represented the means and standard deviations for male, female, neutral, self, and family. We have the marginal means for male and female here, and then we've got the marginal means for neutral, self, and family represented there and then we have the grand mean right there. So if you did want to do this, it's a little bit more complex of a table. It's not too bad to create though. I mean really we're just making some cells and filling them in. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen rows and we would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen columns. Now one of the things that you might have noticed is I actually shifted from portrait mode to landscape mode and that was to fit these tables onto here because we want to make sure that our tables are looking good, that they're fitting, everything's going really well for us and I'll show you how you can actually do that. So what you're going to do is to automatically get everything onto the next page, which you do quite frequently when writing an APA format, you hold down the control button and do enter, control enter. Then I do 
breaks again, I add another continuous break in, and then I go back to portrait. So I oftentimes use this where I shift back and forth from portrait to landscape in my writing, and it just depends on what you need to fit onto the page. So with that, this is how we, you know, make our results sections a little bit more effective. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, this is a little bit complex here, how to make these tables, how do I decide which one is best for me? You're going to have to play around with it. Unfortunately, part of statistics is learning what works for you and what works best with your style. There isn't really a right answer that you should include one of these tables, two of these tables, all of these tables. You're just going to have to figure out what works best for your results section. And this is what I tell all of my undergraduate students that I work with. And students get better and better and better at figuring out what's going to work for them. So with that, if you have any questions, please ask them below. I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to talk through all of this. It's been great. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe.